Today is World AIDS Day, a day for stepping up the fight to prevent new infections and to support people living with HIV. Seth Doan has the story of a woman who devoted years of her life to comforting those in need, men you might call all her sons. You inherited part of a cemetery? I did. What am I gonna do as a cemetery? You know, a nice ring or a watch, but... But it would wind up that you would need a cemetery. Who would have ever thought? Ruth Coker Burks told us this unusual inheritance of 262 cemetery plots was left to her after a family feud. My mother got in a huge argument with her brother when I was 10 and bought all the remaining spaces in the family cemetery so he and his family couldn't be buried with the rest of us. That was the meanest thing she could think to settle the score. The plots sat mostly unused until the AIDS crisis hit Hot Springs, Arkansas. You were with some of these guys as they took their last oh, breath. Oh, yes. Death and I got to be old friends. Coker Burks, a self-described straight church lady, remembers when the disease went by another name. There are more lives claimed, victims claimed, than toxic shock and Legionnaire's disease combined. And yet most of the country doesn't know about this cancer. Legion Why? Well, I think it's because it's a gay cancer. Scientists scrambled to learn more. By 1984, researchers identified that the HIV virus, as it would come to be known, caused AIDS. By 1985, there were more than 20,000 reported AIDS cases worldwide. See, people think that the AIDS epidemic happened in San Francisco or it happened in New York. It didn't happen in the center of the country, but it did. As is the case with so many aspects of AIDS, the enemy isn't just disease, it is fear. And as fear swirled, Ruth Coker Burks, then in her mid-20s, found herself face to face with the disease while visiting a friend at an Arkansas hospital. She noticed a room no one was entering. An AIDS patient was inside. He was so frail and so pale and so near death and he weighed less than 100 pounds and you couldn't really tell him from the sheets on the bed. The young man in 6-H. Did you go in that room? What happened next was dramatized in a short film when the patient, known as Jimmy, asked to speak with his mother. I'd like his mother's phone number, please. He wants his mother. Honey, his mother is not coming. He's been in that room six weeks and nobody is coming. But Ruth Coker Burks returned to Jimmy's room and says she sat with him for the next 13 hours. What made you stay with him until he passed away? He needed me. His mother had already abandoned him. Nobody wanted his remains, so Coker Burke says she paid for his cremation and then put his ashes in a cookie jar and brought them up to that cemetery. She thinks she ended up helping maybe hundreds with AIDS, mostly men, abandoned by families and churches. It sounds like it wasn't always love thy neighbor. No, it wasn't. After helping Jimmy, and what made you think, I'm going to help others? Well, I didn't. They just kept coming. I couldn't turn anybody down. There was no one else to take care of them. There were just no other options. There was none. The KKK burned crosses in my yard three different times. Really? Yes. You must have felt threatened. No. I was, I, I had a killer on my hands. I was dealing with AIDS. Why was I going to be afraid of somebody burning a cross in my yard? Coker Burks became a one-woman AIDS help center driving patients to appointments, trying to find doctors, drugs, or filling out death certificates. John Anderson's gone, Owen's gone, Danny, Neil, they're all people who died. Here we were pretty much left on our own. It, I had Ruth, that was about it. How'd you meet Ruth? I met her at work, I managed a bar, and she came in one night trying to raise some funds to bury someone that had died of AIDS. Paul Wineland says they'd spin up drag show fundraisers to support Coker Burke's work. One of the performers was his own partner of 10 years, Billy. Stage name, Marilyn Morell. I thought it was really great the things that she was doing for people. And then it turned out that I needed her. 
because of Billy, you know. Billy was diagnosed with AIDS. Before dying, he left Ruth his favorite red dress. Just to know that someone cares for you can prolong your time. You look gorgeous. Oh, look at oh. you. Jamie Newworth's younger brother, Joe Ross, was buried here too. You have just been our savior angel, you know that. You just like melted all the fear and all that panic and anxiety. New Earth and her family had little money and were struggling in those final days of her brother's life until a nun gave her Coker Burke's number. She did everything for us. And all we had to do was come out here and, and pick a spot. She was a saint. Jimmy's right here. Do you have any idea how many people you buried here? There's over 40. She admits her memories are a little fuzzy. There's Tim and Jim. And maybe that's not so bad. You know, back then, it was just incomprehensible that this would go on and on and on. But it did. She says she found solace out on the waters of Arkansas's Lake Hamilton. No one was dying on the lake. No one was sick on the lake. You could catch a fish and throw him back in, and he'd swim away to live another day. And it wasn't that way on dry land. Coker Burks took on an informal advisory role on AIDS in the Clinton administration and would eventually be recognized for her work. That was a good man right there. That's a good man. In 2010, she had a stroke, which in part she blames on the stress of that era. Oh, and I forgot to point out, this is Miss Misty McCall's grave. She has one biological daughter, but during that crisis, Ruth Coker Burks became a mother of sorts to countless sons. I didn't have the honor of giving birth to them, but I had the honor of being with them in the moment that they needed somebody the most. And I would take them in my arms and I would carry them across the river of death and there would be on the other side waiting all of the people who loved them and didn't judge them. And I had that honor of handing them back to their friends and to God. They were lucky to have you. I was lucky to have them.